Hello and welcome into the KE Report. Shad and Corey here getting an update from Metallic Minerals traded on the TSXV under the ticker MMG and on the OTCQB under the ticker MMNGF. And we're joined today with the president of Metallic Minerals, Scott Petzl. And Scott, it's great to get you on the show to get an update on Metallic Minerals. Just for everybody listening in, the company has two key projects, the Kino Silver Project in the Yukon and the La Plata Copper Project in Colorado. And we could say you have a third project with the gold Klondike alluvial claims that you have with the royalties on them in the Yukon. But we're going to dive in today to the two projects that are getting the lion's share of the expiration from the company. And I guess, Scott, let's maybe kick things off with the Kino Silver Project up in the Yukon. You are going to start drilling there, I believe, in a month or so. So give us an update on the drilling that's been completed up to date, including last year, and what the main strategy is for 2024. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, you know, our Kino Silver Project is a silver lead zinc project in the central part of the Yukon territories in the famous Kino Hill District. And our project is the second largest land holding in the district next door to Hecla. Hecla is actively mining on a couple of different deposits and working towards the development of four to five million ounces of production a year of silver on their ground and and basically you know we've been exploring Aquino it was the founding property for metallic minerals and our exploration activities over the last few years have finally resulted in some resources so we've now posted what is you know a significant amount for the district 18.16 million ounces of silver equivalent and that comes from four different deposit areas on the property the main resources at our Formo target, which is actually an in-holding within Hecla's ground, just a couple of kilometers from the mill and a couple of kilometers for them from their active mining areas. And you know, it's relatively small, but it is a starter resource, and we see the potential to really grow that resource with more, dr- more drilling. It's taken us about $18 million or so to define that 18 million ounces, but every meter of drilling we do we're adding about a a thousand ounces to the resource so we're excited about what we can do and where we can get with additional work and we'll be kicking off that drill program here within the month before the beginning of august more than likely and we'll drill about 2,000 meters both extending our known areas of mineralization and building resource at the formo target but also testing a few new targets of the 40 different targets that we've identified, of which only 11 have previous drilling on them. And all 11 of those have positive drill results. And so we're excited about kind of the potential of making new discoveries, building on what we know and building resources as we go. So regarding that drilling at the Formo target then, what sort of step outs are we talking? How many of that 2000 meters are gonna be done here? Yeah, I think a little more than half of the 2,000 meters will probably be at Formo, and the step outs will be anywhere from 25 to 50 meters, uh, maybe 75 locally, just just to um, continue to build resources at a reasonable spacing. And also, you know, those little bit of step outs just to provide teasers that, you know, hey, this thing can get bigger. And, you know, I, I expect we'll add we'll add resource there from the work that we do this year. Okay, Scott, and then you mentioned a few new targets. Now, I know in the past we've talked about how you've segmented this property into the west where Formo is, which is really the high-grade area, Uh, but then you have the central area with Caribou and Homestake, and you have the east area that has the Fox and the UKHM. What new targets are you going to be going after on the property? Because as you mentioned, there's so many other targets you haven't even tested yet. Yeah, I think, you know, it's really interesting that when you look at those other areas, Fox, Caribou, Homestake, we could continue to drill those and add resources and step off. And, and I think, you know, that'll be a, a smaller part. Formo is the best target. We're going to continue to build Formo. These other resource areas will be uh, areas that we can sprinkle in a few holes and continue to extend and show the potential growth there. But these 30 other targets that we have, we have exposed mineralization at surface with 1,000 plus gram per ton silver results that have not been drill tested. And so we're still kind of refining which of those targets are actually going to get the drill this year. But for example, there's the McMillan target or Rum Tum. These things have significant widths and look to be 
uh, again, exposed at surface with these 1,000 plus gram assays that have not been drill tested and look to be of that typical style and grade and tenor of the mineralization that's being mined across the district in the Keno Silver District. So, Scott, how do you go about prioritizing these targets? And it sounds like you want to drill all of them, but funding and just time wise, you won't be able to get to all of them. So which ones rise to the top of the pecking order? Yeah, well, it's a it's a constant balancing act to say, okay, this one looks perspective. This one has trenching data. This one has assay data that is above anomalous levels or at extraordinary levels. Again, um, you know, looking at all the factors and just trying to balance that out and make sure we make good calls and using our intuition to make those new discoveries and add to the story of the district. Well, Scott, we'll keep following along as you get more information out on some of the drilling and good luck to the team that starts there just it sounds like in a couple of weeks. I do want to pivot down to La Plata in Colorado because you're going to be doing a lot of field work there. There's a, there's a lot of exploration work the team is doing to prepare for the next drill season. But I think it would be a good opportunity to recap the drilling that was done in 2023 and maybe highlight that this has not been incorporated into the resources at this point in time. Well, that's correct. So there are La Plata project here in southwestern Colorado is an alkaline porphyry system with copper, silver in the resource, but it also contains gold and platinum and palladium. And following a, a really great drill hole in 2022, we had 816 meters of 0.41% copper equivalent. And the end of that hole had significant high grade, not only the copper and silver, but gold, platinum, and palladium values. The combined platinum and palladium values in the last couple of meters were in multi-gram level for those PGEs. And, and I think that's really unique for these types of systems. But following that drill hole in 2022, we attracted the attention of Newcrest, which is now Newmont, and parlayed an investment from them into field work, which resulted in 4,500 meters of drilling to offset the drill hole that was drilled in 2022. And that drilling was done last summer. We hit significant long intervals, up to 900 meters of continuous mineralization, and a little more isolated high-grade segments within there. But we learned a lot about the geology, and we're now really understanding better how to vector towards that higher grade and should be able to follow up with drilling this year on the project that will test not only extensions on the vectors that we've now acknowledged, but also perhaps test some new targets in the district. The key thing, though, is that with the 4,500 meters that was drilled in 2023, that we're able to expand the resource, but also provide enough information from that drilling to be able to populate that resource estimate with gold, platinum, and palladium values. So aside from the existing resource of 1.31 billion pounds of copper equivalent, which is consisting only of copper and silver, we will now be able to add gold, platinum, and palladium to that estimate. And that will be a significant, hopefully significant grade increase, but also increase in, in tonnage and poundage, I guess, in, in the respect of the overall resource number. So, Scott, when it comes to exploration, drilling this year, still sounds like you're doing some of the surface work, but what do you hope to raise? What kind of money do you need to attack this target? And when could you start drilling? Well, I think we'd be ready to start drilling at any time. We'll want to do something significant that has an impact on the work that we're doing and provides value to the shareholders. And so that is somewhere on the order of a 3,000 to 5,000 meter drill program. Again, likely focused on continued expansion of the Allard resource area, but perhaps testing new targets. And so our field work right now is we're out and about deploying our geologic team currently to further define and refine external targets to that resource that may be new discoveries this year or in the coming years. Well, just to that point for people listening in, you've had most of the work done at the Allard target. That's where the resources are. Like you say, you'll be drilling there, but maybe just speak to the prospectivity of this land. 
I think a lot of people discuss copper and they're looking for copper domestically in the U.S. or Canada. And I rarely hear La Plata brought up in the discussion. Maybe just speak to people about how much potential there is in this copper district that you have the land package on. Well, I think it's a really interesting project that way in that it's a forgotten district. You know, was, silver was discovered in the 1700s by the Spanish explorers. There were high grade veins of silver, gold and telluride minerals that were mined from 1860 up to 1940. And then in the 50s, the majors came in, the progenitors of Freeport McMoran, which were Phelps Dodge, and then, of course, Rio Tinto, were competitive in the district and drilled over 20 years. They drilled about 50 holes, 15,000 meters of drilling. But their interest in the property did not continue when the price of copper was 50 cents a pound. And, you know, they're drilling with 0.3 to 0.5 average copper grades. Much of that work did not recognize the value of the addition of gold or platinum and palladium in the deposit at that time. So that that is one factor I think that's helped us. But, you know, drilling in the district stopped in the late 70s and has not been done until Metallic has acquired not only a key property, but expanded that property so that we cover two thirds of the district. And it is a porphyry system, an alkaline porphyry system. The footprint of these systems that might host multiple centers of mineralization is, you know, essentially eight kilometers by eight kilometers. And we've got that covered in our claim package. And we see through the surface work that we've done numerous other targets i think 16 is the number of places that we're trying to refine now as drill targets that could be new discoveries to be added to the allard resource work that we're doing uh and all the drilling again historic drilling was focused on the allard resource and within a two square kilometer area around that resource and that deposit so there's a lot of drilling to be done there's a lot of perspective targets to chase up and do some initial drill testing on to make those new discoveries and continue to add to the story of La Plata. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it up there for today. But lots of news on tap later this year, lots of exploration work kicking up at the Kino Silver Project and then also kicking up later in the year at the La Plata Project. We'll keep following along with both. Scott, keep us posted as more news posts. We'll get you back on the show for an update. And if people listening want to follow along with the news at Metallic Minerals, Definitely click on the link below this interview. It takes you over to the company news site, and uh, you can follow along there. Scott, looking forward to our next conversation. Thanks very much, guys.